to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the Apostle Paul asked the great question in Romans 4, verse 3, What does the Scripture say? We welcome you today to our study of fundamentals of the faith. Today we're going to be discussing those doctrines and teaching of Scripture that are fundamental to one understanding God's Word and New Testament Christianity. We welcome you to today's study, and as always, these lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. These members of the Lord's Church would love for you to stop by and visit their assemblies. If you've got a Bible question or you'd like to study the Word of God further, they'd be more than happy to sit down and open up the Scriptures with you. At the Gospel of Christ, we also want to help you in any way that we can in your study of God's Word. Please visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From that website, you can find a host of Bible study materials, including free DVDs and CDs and transcripts, as well as Bible study questions and correspondence courses, uh, just a wide variety of Bible study tools that will benefit you greatly. And if you've got a Bible question or you're searching the Scriptures more and are looking for a, an answer in the Bible, we'd be happy to point you in the direction of Scripture. You can email us or contact us at the information given during the lesson today. Friend, as we think today about fundamentals of the faith, laying the correct foundation is so important to having that fundamental idea of knowing where our faith comes from. And so we begin by talking about having the right source and the right doctrine as our fundamental guide. You know, when you think about the word doctrine, it's a big word or a word that we don't use a whole lot, that, but it just simply means teaching. The Greek word didache just simply meant teaching. And so when we talk about doctrine, we're talking about following the right teaching. Let's begin by asking Whose doctrine and whose teaching does the Bible encourage us to follow? In Scripture, there are three sources of doctrine specifically mentioned, but only one of those is approved by God. The major fundamental source of doctrine is that of Christ and of God. Jesus said, or John said in 2 John 9, Whoever transgresses, listen now, and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Whose doctrine, teaching, must I abide in to have God as my Father? God's doctrine. Titus 2 verse 10, it is the doctrine of God that accords godliness and creates the spiritual life that God wants us to have. And so we want to emphasize and put our focus on the teaching of Christ and the teaching of God as the fundamental source in our doctrine. But as we mentioned, there are two other sources, and these are sources that one needs to be aware of. For example, in the scripture, there is mentioned the doctrines of demons, which in reality was a departure of the faith. 1 Timothy 4, beginning in verse number 1, the Bible says, The Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith. Well, what do you mean, Paul? Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from food, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who know and love the truth. What is this doctrine of demons? It's false doctrine. It's doctrine that emanates from the, the depths of hell and is trying to sway people away from God and away from truth and align them with the devil and his teaching. And so the idea there is false doctrine or doctrines of men that do not bring about godliness. Then there's a third doctrine that's mentioned. Friend, it's this doctrine that we especially want to encourage people to be on the watch for. There is also mention in Scripture 
the doctrine of men, and we absolutely must beware of that. In Mark chapter 7, we find a great example, as well as in Matthew chapter 15, verse number 9, Jesus said of the religious elite who were putting their trust in the doctrines of men, Jesus said, well did Isaiah prophesy about these people saying, they draw near to me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their heart is it far from me. Now listen, in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. Friend, when we think about doctrine, it's not what a commentary says that matters. It's not what men say that matters. It's not what the popular opinion says that matters. It's not any of those things that originate with men. Our doctrine, to have good doctrine and to stay true to the Scripture, must be based off of the Word and the will of our Heavenly Father. And so let's ask another question. Once we've considered that the source must come from God, what type of doctrine then? are Christians encouraged in Scripture to look for? Friend, the Bible teaches that we need sound doctrine. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, Paul encouraged Timothy to give heed to sound doctrine. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3, Upon the heels of saying, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and teaching, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. What does that idea of sound doctrine really mean? You know, when we say sound doctrine, that, that really doesn't carry the connotation, maybe, that it originally did. The word sound means healthy. It means well. It means solid. It means uh, pure is the idea. We're talking about healthy doctrine. We're talking about that which promotes spiritual health and growth. And so I want sound doctrine. Well, what is that sound doctrine? How do we have true sound doctrine? If our teaching comes from God in the Bible, my friend, it will promote spiritual well-being. The Scripture says that God's Word is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to pierce even to the division of soul and spirit, join tomorrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Sound doctrine is based on the words of this book. God's Word is able to build us up and give us an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Acts chapter 20, verse number 32. This book, God's Word, is the power of God unto salvation. And thus, when we think about the right doctrine, we want it to be sound. We want it to be well. We want it to be healthy doctrine that comes from God and His message of salvation, not from the ideas and teachings of men. Well, with that in mind, we then ask the question, where do we get this doctrine? And as we've alluded to, that doctrine is going to come from the Bible. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus in John chapter 7, verse number 17, as He spoke about doctrine. Jesus said of the doctrine that it is not my own. If anyone desires to do my will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether I speak of my own authority or from God. Friend, when we talk about the source of doctrine, that doctrine emanates from the throne of heaven, from God Himself, from Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. That's where we get that, that doctrine. Now, someone says, okay, well, that's all good and well, but you don't, are you saying God's speaking to me? Christ is speaking to me today? Only as He has told us in Scripture. Where does our doctrine come from if it comes from God? Friend, it's found in the pages of the Bible. That's how God speaks to us today. How do we know that? Listen to the words of Hebrews 1 verse 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, listen now, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. How is God speaking to me and you today? He's speaking through Jesus Christ. Where are the words of Christ at? They're found in the pages of the Word of God. Do you remember that passage in 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17? Paul is writing to the church and through Timothy speaking to the church in Ephesus, and he reminds them of their source of authority being the Bible 
from God. And he says these words, All Scripture, not some, not a few, not most, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means God breathed. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, thoroughly equipped unto every good work. Friend, as we think about our Bible and as we think about how important it is that we get our doctrine from God, from Jesus Christ, from the Holy Spirit, the only way I can do that is right here in the pages of this book. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter 1 verses 19 through 21. Jesus promised His apostles that the Spirit was going to come upon them and they were going to be guided into all truth. John 16 verse 13. We open to Acts chapter 2. And the Spirit did come upon those men. They began to preach and speak by the power and the Spirit of God. And what they said and wrote, which we have today in the Bible, comes from God and is the absolute source we need to trust on this matter. Now, as we think about doctrine, please understand there is a sense in which in the Lord's church, God's elders do have doctrine in matters of uh, fulfilling the Word of God and matters of expediency. Elders have the responsibility to labor in doctrine, meaning that they're going to study, they're going to teach. 1 Timothy 5 verse 17 says that elders are worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and doctrine. And so when we think about elders, they have a big responsibility in shepherding the flock and making sure that it's taught and fed as it ought to be. Acts chapter 20, verse number 27 following. Elders have the responsibility of keeping the flock pure by convicting and exhorting those who contradict true doctrine. Titus 1 verse 9, they're told to stop the mouths of those who are contradicting good doctrine. And so elders do play a role in this. They are to study and to teach and to make opportunities where people can learn God's doctrine in the Lord's church and they are to stand up and oppose those who do not teach the doctrine of God as they ought to teach. But you know, as we think about that good doctrine, in the Lord's church, and especially as it relates to teaching and preaching, Bible class teachers from every level, starting at the youngest all the way up, gospel preachers have a great responsibility as it relates to doctrine. A good evangelist and teacher must follow the doctrine of Christ closely. Paul said, give attention to doctrine, to reading, to exhortation until I come. Part of the, the teacher's work is to focus on the doctrine of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I understand there's a place for an application. There's a great place for application. I understand there's a place for illustration. There's no doubt about that. But friend, we want people to leave when they've come. We want them to leave with their bucket full of the Word of God. And what does the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, say? You know, part of the work of a good teacher is he must make sure his doctrine is in life with the harmony of the Scriptures. The Bible says, Paul said, that I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I've preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 27. But friend, we also want to emphasize this idea. A good teacher, preacher, and evangelist must preach sound doctrine. Paul said in Titus chapter 2 verse 1 to Titus, a young evangelist, as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. 1 Peter 4 11, the Bible says, if any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. Preach the word. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, Bible class teachers, preachers, evangelists, we're not in the business of saying what society wants us to say. We're not in the business of reading up on the latest commentary and divulging that. That's not what we're about. We're about saying what God says, preaching the gospel, and only emphasizing from Scripture what God wants to be emphasized and taught according to the Bible. Now, friend, it is saying that we live in a day and age 
where there is a mass amount of false doctrine that's being taught. And listen very carefully. That false doctrine breaks our heart and it breaks the heart of God because those who buy into it, listen to it, and live it and die in that state, they're not living according to the teaching of Christ. 2 John 9 says they do not have God as their Father. And so we must be aware of any doctrine that places man's teaching and ideas above God. Remember again Matthew 15 verse 9, They draw near to me with their mouth, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Well, why, Jesus? In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. Friend, when we think about false doctrine, we need to be wary of those who teach other ideas that are not found in the Scripture. Paul mentioned the idea of uh, fables and endless genealogies and that uh, such like would bring false doctrines that we need to avoid. You know, there are things in Scripture that God tells us clearly on, and we need to follow those, but the idea of fables or somebody's got an idea about this or that or whatever it may be, let's just stick to the Bible not get caught up in all the other stuff that goes on in our world today. In fact, Scripture teaches that the false doctrine that's out there has the ability to sear one's soul. The Bible says of those doctrines of demons in 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, that some had their conscience seared with a hot iron. That searing makes it hard for the Word of God to get in into their life and affect them spiritually as God wants them to. And so false doctrine, it hardens one's heart against the truth and makes it difficult for the Word of God to penetrate that and really be what God wants it to be. Hebrews 13, 9 mentions it this way. Paul says, or the writer of Hebrews says, that there are strange, various, and strange doctrines. Friend, I think we live in a world today where we can see that's the case. There are a lot of strange doctrines, a lot of strange doctrines about uh, salvation that you don't find in the Bible, uh, saying the sinner's prayer. Did you know that's not even in the Bible? Where's that sinner's prayer that you've heard likely and I've heard people say, you need to say the sinner's prayer, and then they'll say something like this, Dear Jesus, I accept you into my heart. I now ask you to come into my life and, and help me to live for you, or whatever it may be. Where's that at in the Bible? Friend, that's a strange doctrine, meaning it's not in the pages of the Bible. It's foreign to the teaching of the New Testament. Uh, another strange doctrine that we have in our world today simply relates to the church. And it says concerning the church that you can just go out and choose the church of your choice and God's going to be happy with you. Is that really what God has taught in the Scripture? Friend, I think as you read the Bible, you can see that's a strange doctrine. God never teaches that. In fact, Jesus said, I'll build my church. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 21 through 23. Jesus taught that the church belonged to Him. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 18. The Bible teaches there is but one church, one body. Ephesians 4, verse 4. And God adds one to the church when He obeys the gospel. Acts chapter 2, verse number 47. Now I want to take just a moment and I want to emphasize the importance of Christian doctrine, good Christian doctrine and why that is so important, such a high value. It ought to be such a high value in my life and yours. Friend, do you realize that we can't know God's will without knowing the doctrine? I want to direct your attention to the words of Jesus again, and they're found in the Gospel of John, chapter 7, and I want you to listen to what Jesus says in verse number 17. Remember, we can't know God without knowing His doctrine. John 7, 17, Jesus said, If anyone wills, and the eye there is to wants, if anyone wants to do His will, he shall know concerning the doctrine whether I speak of God or whether I speak of on my own authority. If you want to do God's will, you've got to make sure you're following the doctrine of Christ. And so I can't do God's will without first knowing the doctrine. So, you know, some people say, well, give me Jesus, but all these commands and all these various ideas, I don't need all that. 
Friend, you can't know God and Christ and be a Christian without the teaching or the doctrine of Christ. You can't be free from sin without it. John 8 verse 32, Jesus said, You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Buy the truth and sell it not. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 23. And then we emphasize the importance of God's doctrine, Christ's doctrine, because that doctrine has the power and the ability to set me free from sin. I want to direct your attention to Romans chapter 6, and I want you to notice with me verses 17 and 18 as we think about the importance of Christ's doctrine, God's doctrine, in making sure that we're free from sin. Listen to these words, Romans 6 beginning in verse 17. Paul says, But God be thanked that though you were the slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. In this context, what is it that set them free? They were slaves of sin, and what set them free? God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. The doctrine of Christ has the power to free me from sin. What's that mean? All have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 The wages of that sin is death. Romans 6.23 But the Bible says the gospel, the doctrine of Christ, the good news of Christ, it's God's power to save. And then, friend, we emphasize as we did earlier in the lesson, you cannot, why is the doctrine of Christ so important? You cannot have God as your Father without following the doctrine of Christ. Now that's pretty stern, and that's pretty serious, and I want you to see that for yourself from the Scripture. Notice 2 John, verse number 9. Look at what the Bible says on this idea of, of, of making sure, if I'm going to have God as my Father, I've got to follow the doctrine of Christ. 2 John 9 says this, Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. And so, if I'm going to abide in the doctrine of Christ, in the teaching of Christ, I've got to have God uh, to do that, to have God as my Father. I've got to abide in His teaching and make sure that teaching is what God wants me to follow. And then we also mention this. It is the doctrine of Christ that produces godliness in my life. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 3. The doctrine of Christ which accords or promotes godliness. How do I become a godly person? How do I really live as God wants me to live? How do I honor the Father in my everyday life? By following the doctrine of Christ. You know, the Bible teaches in Matthew 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. How am I to be that light? By following the doctrine and the teaching of Christ. Now, with this doctrine, I also have a certain amount of responsibility to it and to God. New Testament doctrine is something each Christian must learn and follow all his life. You know, when we talk about responsibility, we're talking about accountability, we're talking about my relationship toward it. We've seen what doctrine can do for us. What's my relationship toward doctrine? I've got to make it my aim as a child of God to want to learn and follow that doctrine all my life. Acts 2 and verse 42 of the early church, it is said, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. That early church, early group of Christians, made it their aim to follow the doctrine given to the apostles by the Holy Spirit. Friend, that needs to be my desire and yours. I want to search the Scriptures daily to see if these things are so. And then, as we think about part of our responsibility to this doctrine, the Christian is to adorn the doctrine of Christ 
in his life. Titus 2 verse 10 mentions this in a beautiful fashion. I am to adorn the doctrine of Christ, which literally means I am to put on as a beautiful outer garment. I'm to put on the doctrine of Christ every day. How do I do that? How do you wear a doctrine? That's a teaching. By every day letting its principles be lived in your life and seeing of others seeing Christ living in us. This is just a beautiful way of saying being the type of example we ought to be by following Christ. Uh, Matthew 5 16 as we mentioned let your light so shine before men that they may see our example and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Acts 4 verse 13 of the early Christians James and Peter there Peter and John they realized they had been with Jesus. Why? They were adorning the doctrine of Christ in their life. And then, my friend, if I'm going to have the correct relationship with doctrine, I must study and give attention to that doctrine and do my best to teach it to others. You know, you can't sit on this doctrine. You can't be the Lord's silent partner as it relates to the doctrine of Christ. God wants His people to freely and passionately speak about the gospel. Go into all the world. Jesus said, Mark 16, verse 15, Him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. As we think about the doctrine of Christ today, friend, we want you to consider seriously this doctrine in your life. We want to consider it in ours. We want everyone to simply give heart and ear to the teaching and the doctrine of Christ. But ultimately, that teaching is the good news of Jesus. And here's that wonderful news. Of Jesus it was said, You shall call His name Jesus. He will save His people from their sins. Matthew 1, verses 19-21. through 21. Have you obeyed the doctrine of Christ? Have you heard the word about Christ? Romans 10, verse 17. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God, Savior of the world? John 8, 24. Would you be willing to turn from sin and repent? Acts 3 and verse 19. Confessing the beautiful name of Jesus, would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Mark chapter 16, verse 16. If you've never obeyed the doctrine of Christ, friend, we love you, God loves you. We encourage you today, become a Christian, submit to the doctrine of Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.